So in this video, I'll be talking about um, everything you need to take care of. I usually use a highland Nepenthes species. Well, this species in particular here is Nepenthes ventrata. A vigorous hybrid. So, first I'm talking about the lighting. I'm zip through this. Um, it's 14 to 12 hours a day, compact fluorescent. If, if, if you can't afford... Sorry, that could be offensive. If you don't want to do artificial in, uh, lighting, you can do a self-facing windowsill, which is quite dark out there. Okay, for the temperature, um, the highs, I, in my clock, um, if you can see this, 32.9 degrees Celsius high and 18.9 degrees Celsius low. And for the Fahrenheit, folks, 91 high and 66 low. It's a little bit too hot for 32 degrees Celsius from the Pentis Highland, but it's okay. Humidity, uh, highest is 99, lowest is 62. And right now it's 92%. Is this, is that, is about the similar humidity because they get sprayed at the same time. For the um, maintenance, um, just don't don't cut off any yellow leaves. Like it could be actually harm the plant. Only cut off the leaves that is almost black. Black or decomposed. For Media I use is pure long fiber sphagnum moss. You can also add orchid barks and 20% perlite because um, perlite is alkaline and most Nepenthes like high acidic. And for the media, as you can see, the top is boreal moss I collected from wild. Don't use any type of other mosses for Nepenthes media, only long fiber sphagnum moss. Other like decorative green moss, they will kill your plant. And for picturing, um, this plant, um, to make the plant picture, you simply just go in there and spray the tendrils with water, distilled or tap. Tap water, you have to get your place tested. I'll go in more detail of water in this further in this video. For fertilizer, orchid, high quality orchid life fertilizer, usually like one over four teaspoon per like gallon of water. For the water now, it has to be under 100 parts per, mil parts per million or ppm, also known as ppm, or total dissolved minerals, TDS. And yeah, this plant, don't waterlog it, they like... They like sort of like damp. They don't like waterlogged conditions. For feeding, just get some like odd little insects around the house, or if not, go to like your garden and snack some ants, wool lice, pill bugs, all works. As long as it can fit in the pitcher. Don't over overstuff it or else the pitcher will start rotting. And ants, if you feed too much ants, it'll burn holes under the pitcher because it's ants are acidic. If not, if you can't get find little insects where you can't access them, you, you can go to a local pet store and buy like blood worms. For feeding, oh yeah, I already talked about them. So, ways to grow them, you can grow them in a sunny windowsill with artificial light because right now it's winter and November, snowy outside and I have a plastic dome on it to keep the humidity high or you can grow in a nice Humidify the greenhouse. Co don't grow them in cro cold frame greenhouse. Bad for this plant. This plant is tropical plant. No dormancy required. Or a greenhouse style um, terrarium. Or they will work in the potted landscape terrarium. But make sure you have to don't grow them with like a Venus flytrap. And yeah, this plant can you can basically grow anywhere, as long as have um, good humidity and good lighting. And, and yeah, the good temperature. And where to buy these plants? 
Well, these plants, their Ventrada is a little bit more rare to find than like Ventricosa and Ventricosa and or Sanguinea. Like this is Ventrada. Like it's not that common, but you can still find it in like garden centers. But mainly the mass produce is like Ventricosa. You can find them ev anywhere. Very cute little plant. Yeah. Or the best options probably online, but keep in mind, usually local places are cheaper than online. So if you don't have any garden center local, then look towards online. So local first, online second. So this is a little bit longer usual video than usual, but it covered a lot. And see you on the next video.